No. I'm talking about the rest of the Muslims. The Ottoman Empire is a different kettle of fish from the rest of the world of Islam. <coughs> we have a positive relationship with Rome. And then when Allah says that in time to come you'll find that those who have the greatest love and affection for you Muslims will be those who say we are Christians. Obviously, we can identify the Christians now with whom we'll have that loving relationship. The answer is Rome. Is Russia a part of Rome? Whoever says no should buy a one-way ticket to the moon. Go and live there. Don't come back here. Russia is most certainly a part of Rome. Russia is indeed the leader of Rome at this time. When Constantinople was conquered by the Ottomans, then the capital of Rome shifted. It could no longer be Constantinople. The patriarch in Constantinople had to be a citizen of Turkey. <laughs> had to be Turkish. <laughs> so that could not be anymore the capital of Rome. Moscow then replaced Constantinople. But whether Moscow re replaced Constantinople or not, you may want to argue with me. I don't have time to argue. What we are saying, and if I'm wrong, I invite you, my critics, to come forward with integrity. And don't hide behind pseudonyms. Use your name if you want to offer a criticism. This is scholarly integrity. If you want to criticize Imran Hussein and you're afraid to use your name, you're not a scholar. No. We say that Russia is a part of Rome. We are absolutely correct in that statement. And therefore there is a relationship between Islam and Russia. Because the relationship between Islam and Rome and Russia is a part of Rome. And that relationship is one which is positive. History may have a lot of blood in it that is otherwise, and you can blame the Ottoman Empire for that, but don't blame the Quran. So now let's go back. O oh, you who have faith in Allah Most High, do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your friends and allies. You can do all kind of mathematics that you want to do. You cannot avoid the conclusion. It is a valid conclusion. It is unassailable that Allah is not talking about all Jews and He's not talking about all Christians. And hence we have the right to ask the following question. Well then which Jews and which Christians is He talking about? This methodology is unassailable. We know that there have been several efforts to explain this verse of the Quran. Several efforts, meritorious efforts. May Allah bless them for their struggle. But this methodology that we are using is unassailable. Which Jews and which Christians is Allah speaking about? When he says, don't take them as your friends and allies. And we say, the answer is there in the words which follow. Ba'aduhum awliya'uba. As plain as daylight. The answer is ba'aduhum awliya'uba. Allah is saying, do not take such Jews and do not take such Christians as your friends and allies, who themselves 
are friends and allies of each other. In other words, the Quran is telling us, or you may want to use the word the Quran is anticipating. If you have any problems with the word anticipate, well, the Quran is telling us that there's going to come a time when a mysterious reconciliation between Jews and Christians is going to take place. And a Jewish a Jewish Christian alliance is going to emerge in history. When the Jewish Christian alliance takes place, then Allah is commanding us, do not take them as your friends and allies. Has that Jewish Christian alliance emerged? The only ones who seem to be unaware of that are those who are waging their Yankee Jihad in Syria and they don't have time for the Quran. And the Yankee Jihad in Libya and they don't have time for the Quran. No. The rest of us know that the Jewish Christian Alliance has emerged. Yes, it has. It is the Zionist Jew and the Zionist Christian who have bonded themselves together in a Judeo Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance. And they are the ones who took power in Britain, causing the British government <laughs> to issue the Balfour Declaration in 1917. They are the ones who took control of power in the United States of America, establishing a mysterious relationship with the United States and Israel, as Britain had with Israel before. They are the ones who today have NATO as their military arm. They are the ones who defy every law, domestic law, international law, every law they defy. They break every law in order to achieve their objectives. They use deception, they use monstrous lies, they use oppression, and then they come to you and tell you, you must obey the law. You are breaking the law <laughs> when they don't have even an utter sh any shame on their faces. But you've broken the law so many times. Mm. These are the ones who want to control the world. They're the ones who want to establish one world government. I don't know what's wrong with the world of Islamic scholarship. That they seem to be so happy talking and lecturing about peanuts and keeping the Muslim masses happy out there with halwa, while a people are attempting to take control of power all over the whole world. And the silence from the world of Islamic scholarship is so profound, it's embarrassing. Embarrassing. These are the people who brought the State of Israel into being. These are the people who have kept Israel alive. And these are the people who want to rule the world, Islamic eschatology says, so that they could give to Israel the status of ruling state in the world. Why do they want Israel to rule the world? The rest of us know it. The only ones who don't know it are those who are waging their Yankee Jihad in Syria. They don't have time for this. They want Israel to rule the world so that tomorrow a man will stand up in Israel Nabi Muhammad Islam described that man to us. He said he would be a Jew, not a system. He said he would be a Jew. He said he'd be a young man. He'd be powerfully built. He'll have curls. The Orthodox Jews have curls. And he would declare from Jerusalem, I am the Messiah, Al Masih. But he would not be the Messiah because he would not be the son of Maryam alayhi salam. He would be al-Masih al-Dajjal. All of us know that. They don't know it as yet. They're too busy waiting the Yankee Jihad, taking weapons from NATO, begging NATO to expose a no-fly zone so they could bomb the Gaddafi out of existence so they could then take over Libya. With all the help of NATO, they could never have taken over Libya. No. So they took help from the enemies of Islam. 
they took help from those that Allah prohibited us from maintaining friendly ties from them, with them. And now they parade themselves as Mujahideen. No, they are Dajjal's warriors. This then is the Quran explaining to us the world today. Do not be their friends. Do not be their allies. Is the world of Islamic scholarship aware of this verse in the Quran? Are our learned and distinguished scholars of Islam around the world even aware of this verse in the Quran? That Allah is prohibiting us from maintaining friendly ties and being allies of a Judeo-Christian alliance. The, the silence from the world of Islamic scholarship is so profound it is now embarrassing. What is the price that we pay if we violate the law and maintain friendly ties with them? What is the price we pay if we enter into their embrace? For example, they destroy the Khilafah and they replace this with this bogus modern Republican state which declares that Allah is no longer Al-Akbar and Al-Malik. Sovereignty now belongs to the state. And we all are incorporated into this system within the United Nations. What is the price that we pay if we violate the order of the Quran and enter into the embrace? What is the price we pay if we allow them to remove dinar and dirham from the market and they replace it with this bogus paper, plastic and electronic money which is ripping us off we enter into their political embrace, we enter into their monetary embrace. What is the price that we pay? What is the price that we pay if we enter into their market? The market that they establish and control, which is the market of thieves. Where banking system now rules the world of the market. A banking system based on river. If we do that, what price do we pay? I did not ask, have we done it? I'm asking, if we do it, what is our price? Allah says, وَمَن يَتَوَلَّهُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Whosoever from amongst you turn to them with that relationship of friendship and alliance, entering into the embrace, you now belong to them. You are no longer Muslim. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ and Allah does not provide the islands for a people who are wicked. With this fundamentally important verse of the Quran, we are now able to recognize one half of the Christian world, which is a, in an alliance with Jews, that those Christians which are in alliance with Jews, we are not allowed to be friends with them. And another part of the Christian world identified in the Quran as room and they will be victorious. And when they are victorious, we will celebrate. We now turn to our subject proper. If the Quran has informed us that we have a positive relationship with Rome. Then should we not be striving and struggling through the vicissitudes of warfare? Sometimes there may be a skirmish here or there. But our diplomatic philosophy would be to always seek to establish relationship with them which is friendly not perpetual jihad. No. Is it not strange, therefore, that for 500 years an Ottoman Empire that would like us to believe that it was an Islamic Empire waged eternal jihad on Rome? 